Uh, you and Jessica have become very good friends. When when Notre Dame loses, do you console her or do you make fun of her? I so when Iowa loses, if somebody texts me, you're on my list. We're not pals. I know you don't really care about me. So when I saw that Notre Dame lost, I literally looked at Thomas and I said, I will not say one word to Jess. And then Iowa lost. And I said, Well, well, damn, we're both in a tough spot here. So I made a little joke. And so since we both lost, I'll say something. But if Notre Dame had lost and Iowa won, you bet I would have not answered this question right now. Mike, how does it work with you when UM loses? Do any Does anyone here bury you or do they all leave you alone because they know you care way too much and it's unreasonable? Usually it's the only time I get to actually talk about Miami football when they lose. So I'm uh, pretty quiet on my front today. Yeah. Uh, I've okay. never texted Mike after a loss, ever. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, Lucy's not here and Jess isn't here, so – and put all that uh, Mike makes a schedule talk away. Uh, Lucy, did you see any of uh, Big Noon? Because uh, Mike Ryan has fallen in love with what is the uh, it, it's the alternate uh, pregame show because game day has been the master for a long time. But Big Noon kickoff is something that it, a lot of people are noticing that it too is good. I did not watch Big Noon this weekend, but I have watched Big Noon previously. I think they do a great job. I think that College Game Day is kind of following suit with what Big Noon did because Big Noon started like really trying to engage the fans originally where college game day was just like an experience you go and you watch and now with like the pat mcafee like field goal and like a little more like crowd interaction you can see they're sort of taking a page from big noon's playbook i think both shows do a really good job and it's honestly for me i know that i'll watch the show that i have that's at the game i care more about yeah, they're both really good shows, and I think Big Noon is creeping more into the national conversation with the stuff that they're doing, be it live music performances, which is something that I enjoyed from last week's show, Matthew McConaughey actually giving really good analysis, leaving Urban Meyer, uh, Urban Meyer speechless at one point during halftime, and then having a face-off on the field while holding a Longhorn flag up against Charles Woodson, and both of them talking trash face-to-face. -face. We're in a pretty good era of college football coverage and we all, all used to be all in on game day is the only thing that matters and now that you have an alternative you can actually sample both have one on each screen flip channels depending on the game and last week was certainly a big big 10 game between texas and michigan they might actually give you more of what you want i love having options i was driving on sunday morning before football and lucy i'm curious what your take here is because it's not surprising but i'm i'm legit Legitimately staring at my radio, Sirius XM, with my mouth open because we've already gotten to, well, you can't blow it up again in Colorado. You know that Dion might leave with Shador and Travis, right? You know that he might leave with Travis Hunter and Shador. And other people are saying, and you know he's not going to let you fire him. He's going to get, and I'm like, whoa, we're there already, but it looked that bad against Nebraska. It didn't look any better than last year. I think, like, I think that's kind of my takeaway from the two games Colorado has played. Somehow they're the exact same team with all different players, like the exact same team. Uh, Nebraska is not a bad football team by any means. Nebraska is a team that is like not their record has never really been accurate to how good they've been the last few years. But this was a long time coming for both Colorado and Nebraska. Nebraska was going to get that big win and Colorado was going to show exactly who they are, which is not a good football team. Their defense is bad. Their offensive line is terrible. They have three players. They have three players on that football team, but yet they're three really good, really fun players. So we have put so much into that when the rest of it is genuinely terrible and unwatchable football. They were really committed in offseason talent acquisition to the offensive line, and you've got nothing to show for it except a quarterback throwing that offensive line that's still got a block for him under the bus. One of the offensive lines that really also caught my attention for playing poorly – was Oregon. What is happening with Oregon right now? They conceded all five sacks all of last season. They conceded four just to Boise State alone. They needed two returns for touchdowns to eke out a W against Boise State, which, with all due respect, is a good football team. Always good. Yeah, they're, 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 they're good. They have, they have the best running back in the nation, but I cashed out on, on an Oregon to win the national title uh, futures bet because that offensive line, Lucy, that does not appear to be it. 
No, that was my thought watching that game back was so my thing is I don't really take too much stock in a close win against Boise State because like you guys said, Boise State is unbelievably good and Ashton Genty is the best running back in college football and if you have not watched him, you should. It's appointment television. He had six touchdowns the first week, but the offensive line looked so, so bad and Oregon still has that big play potential, but like Dylan Gabriel doesn't necessarily have like the fiery zest of Bo Nix, so he needs a little bit more from his offensive line, which we're not seeing so far and as as good as Boise State is you're about to enter the Big Ten which is built on the foundation of very strong defenses and very good D lines Oregon is gonna have to make some changes pretty much ASAP because like you are not going to have the luxury of you know two like returns when you're playing a Big Ten team like that's just not gonna happen but the offensive line was my biggest issue I think just like defensive wise I'm not too worried about giving up anything to Ashton Denty because he's literally so 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 good what is this fiery zest that you talk about? What I have not heard anyone in sports analysis say that someone has a fiery zest. I, what is this? Uh, how he like runs with his head cut off like a chicken, like Bo Nix. The okay. Bo Nix experience, baby. You don't know what you're gonna get. It's crazy. I it's just, wild. You get about four air yards. Yeah, three point three yards per attempt in Denver. Well, that didn't Look. seem like fiery zest. It seemed like charred remains of garbage. Yeah. Well, you didn't watch freshman year Auburn at Bo Nix. That was the best. That was his. He that was, was just a team. young and child he, when that happened. Yeah, and he was awesome. He was great. Did I'm, what Oregon does isn't what the NFL does. Bo Nix kicked ass at Oregon last year. The last two years, he was so fun. He was one of the best offensive players in the country. Sorry that it didn't translate to your precious NFL. I just don't know what this fiery zest is. Who else has fiery zest? Bo Nix at Oregon has who, fiery who, who, zest. All right, who else has fiery zest right now? Who else showed you? Let's do a segment. Let's get a let's get That's a sponsor a for spicy foods and let's get a who showed you fiery zest this week and you wept you wept again during the wave? Yeah, okay, but that one I feel like is really really valid. They're waving to children in the children's hospital who are too sick to be there to watch the game so they watch from up there. You're right. Everyone yeah. cries at that. I cry every single time. <laughs> Lucy, so you don't mentioned... you dare bully me for that, Dan. <laughs> I think you tipped your your hand as to where you're going next week. What's a what's a game this coming weekend? Is it Wisconsin, Alabama? Yes. Tyler Alabama, Van Dyke Wisconsin. versus Alabama. Crazy. This has been a very like this is kind of one of those weeks where you look at it and you're like, oh, okay. We're like, ban our game day is going to LSU at South Carolina. And you're like, all right, like. I guess this is what we have. So, like, Alabama's Wisconsin, I don't expect it to be very great, although Alabama did look iffy against USF this weekend. I'm just a little nervous because I do think Alabama is going to win, and not that I'm rooting for Wisconsin, but I'm in dangerous Ted Cruz territory of going 0-3 for the home team, and no one's ever going to let me back. Well, this is part of what's happening now. The energy of the report gets um, – you, you have to do a lot more work when the, the home team loses, correct? I do, uh, but, like, most of the stuff we do is before the game, and everyone has, like, this insane confidence that they probably shouldn't have. But it, my job is a lot easier when the home team wins. And so far, we are 0-2 on that, and, like, most likely Bama's going to beat Wisconsin by 50, and that's really going to bum us out. But on the bright side, I think Wisconsin and Iowa are in the same sort of family tree of they get so drunk at tailgates and they will be fun no matter what. The biggest story of the weekend was Northern Illinois, uh, of the college football weekend, is Northern Illinois going into Notre Dame and winning uh, at, the, at the last moments. Uh, what's second? The second biggest story? Yeah, just something from the weekend that you would put in the – there's nothing to put in the realm of that, but you say week three, you're not totally thrilled with what's coming up. What about what we just watched? Week – so I think the second biggest story is that several teams tried to do what Notre Dame did this weekend. Penn State was down at half to Bowling Green. Alabama led USF by one point in the fourth quarter. Like, we, there were so – Oregon barely beat Boise State, needed a game-winning field goal. There were a lot of top ten teams this week that were so close to doing what Notre Dame did. And so that makes me excited because I'm hopefully me – that means that in the coming weeks we're going to start see that happening and – more of the Notre Dame NIU results. But I think it shows that, like, you know, it's not as wide open. We didn't think that – we thought the top was a lot heavier than it is. And so playoff could be crazy. Things are, things are going wild right now.
I think another great story is what Tennessee has done. They've, they're they, so good. They're, they're, oh, my God. Their defense is really good. And NC State spent a fair amount of money in talent acquisition along the offense, and you wouldn't know it from watching that. It appears like Tennessee is getting to Tier 1 status, Lucy. Oh, absolutely. James Pierce is one of the best players in the entire country. And obviously we all know that Tennessee is going to have a really great offense. Tennessee is a super interesting team because it feels like no one's talking about them except for you just asking that question right now because you're in the SEC where you just saw Texas beat the crap out of Michigan and Georgia beat the crap out of Clemson last week. Tennessee is still very much a contender and they look really, really good because the thing with Tennessee a few years ago when they had Hinton Hooker was their offense was amazing, but their defense was still one big giant question mark. That defense looks really good right now. And I know that NC State isn't like a high flying offense or anything, but the way they were able to score against one of the better defenses in the ACC and then to be able to defend the way they have with James. Pierce, who I cannot emphasize enough, is one of the best players in the country. Tennessee is a very, very dangerous team. It seems like you two would both go in terms of early first month of the season that it's Texas, Tennessee, and Georgia is the best of what you've seen. I think Ohio State's really good. Jeremiah Smith is outstanding. I think that they're like in a tier and teams like Nebraska and Miami are kind of like figuring out where they fit in this expanded college football playoff. I think it's irrefutable, though. Alabama's probably in that second tier, too. It's irrefutable that uh, that the talent has dispersed across the nation and really like maybe four or five teams have a legitimate shot at winning this national title. Yeah, for sure. And I also think that like I have to tell myself this every week one, every week two of each new college football season. We all got to chill out for a little bit. We all have to just collect ourselves. This is why I wish like polls didn't exist till week five because two weeks ago we thought Florida State was – a top 10 team like we're all still trying to learn and adjust we don't really know who's good yet or who's not but i think we can confidently say that the only teams we're very sure are good tennessee texas georgia ohio state very very good what was the fallout on you appearing on jimmy kimmel i i'm it was cool. I don't know. There was not very much fallout. People seemed to be pretty happy for me. For the first time in my life, my brother thought I was cool. He was like, hey, Lucy, meet my friends. She was on Jimmy Kimmel. That's never happened. So that was really, really cool. I've been getting like mean tweets a lot lately, but I don't really care about that. I get mean tweets just doing this. What about uh, your return to Iowa? You go back frequently. How did all of that end up feeling uh, to you? Oh, it was so fun. I wish, I don't know if Rose is in studio or not, but she told me unprompted that Iowa had the best tailgating of anywhere we've ever gone, which I took so much pride in. And that it was great to be back. I know the vibes were kind of they were really high because it was a rivalry game and Iowa scored 40 points the week before. Obviously, losing sucks, but it was always it's always so much fun to go back there. And everyone treats me like a little celebrity, which is so cool. They said, Lucy, can we get your picture? However, I will say that two fans of this show, shout out to you guys. After Iowa gave up like an 80 yard touchdown pass and the stadium was silent, I was standing right behind the Iowa bench and they were all in a bad mood. And these fans just kept screaming, Lucy, 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 which was very nice, but you. You picked the worst possible time. Let's go. You got to get your timing right, Iowa people. You have to be zealots in the correct way uh, with rhythm and uh, with respect to the product on the field. (laughs) 